learning to manage the game better at the end. And I didn't think we did a good job of that the last 20 minutes. Um, but I love the fight that we presented to, to hold on. As far as the, 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 the past history, you know, with uh, results the last time with the Ivory Coast, I've said this all week to anybody that's listened to me, is I'm not, I love history, but I'm not a big believer in past history having anything to do with what we do presently. And that's what we preached all week. It didn't matter what's happened in the past. It was all about the players that are here now and it's a different group of players, it's a different coaching staff, and um, so we can't, can't be concerned with the past. I do feel very um, positive about the second leg, but we also know we've only done half the job. So we know and respect that they're fully capable of, of getting a result at home, so we have to prepare, be prepared to, to get that result on the road, but, but I, I like my team. Coming in, it's just an honor to play for this team. I've been watching them for years, and you know I dreamed about playing with the Super Falcons. So um, to be able to make my debut today uh, was amazing, and um, <laughs> to score two goals, I would have taken one. But to score two <laughs> goals, you know, I really just want to make an impact on this team. Um, I have so much more to give. I think you know, besides two goals, I can better my performance, and you know that all goes to it being my first game. So I'm just excited to continue again as a team. We're in a much better place with the players we have in this camp and the way they've been training and the way they've been understanding what we want to do. Much better this than what we were against. Nigerian Super Falcons there well for the progress of the show on Friday when they won that game 2 nil against the Little Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. Welcome you properly into the world of sport on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Lots of action-packed activities during the weekend in the Nigerian Professional Football League, Nigerian National, you know, also forgetting the top five leagues in Europe. A lot of matches as we'll be starting though, from uh, badminton. Badminton game took place in Uganda. All African Championship in Nigeria. Anuoluakoyori actually won that competition, winning gold for Nigeria. That's the first story we'll be looking at as we roll out our stories on the show. 360 Sport is here again. Joining me is Ajide uh, Olushala. Good to have you. Uh, good morning, viewers. It's good to be here. Good morning. We are starting with uh, badminton. Nigerian Okoyori did well over there in Uganda, as he was able to make statements in the sport of badminton for Nigeria. He won gold, and right now he's celebrating. Nigerians are also celebrating this uh, wonderful badminton player. Anuolo Akweori has been fantastic when it comes to badminton. He was supposed to be alongside two other Nigerians, uh, Dokas Adeshoko and also Godwin Olofua, but they couldn't make it due to one reason or the other. But right now, at least he went alone and he was able to uh, conquer that uh, competition, winning against uh, is Uganda counterpart, uh, counterpart there. Good one for Anuolu Akweori. Being able to win this, in fact, it was almost not making that particular trip. Yeah. Well, uh, due to the issue of uh, faction or fights mm -hmm. in Badminton Federation and in Nigeria. COVID, and the COVID derivation as well. Exactly. Uh, but then uh, the news came yesterday night as well, and uh, it was a very, very beautiful news. You know? If it came directly from the, I got it from the president, that's the factional president anyway. He said, he told me about the, the, uh, the victory. And it was very beautiful that uh, Nigeria is making waves at the badminton level, at the African stage. And uh, our prayer now is, is, go, is to go beyond the African stage and get to the world stage. I'm sure we will, we will surely get to win gold or silver or bronze in future international meets. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a good one for this young guy. Like he said earlier, that there were itches, you know, due to the uh, issues surrounding the Federation right now. Right now, there's no precedent. According to the courts, there's no precedent, and um, the factional bodies are trying to you know, lay claim to whatever they want to lay claim with, and this is affecting the players. But be as it may, uh, this, this young guy still went ahead, you know, and they still, he, he, in fact, he did himself proud right now, because uh, I will not see, I will not see the federation being behind him, hundred percent. But, uh, you know, like I said, a bit due, to, due to the crisis in the federation, but uh, he still went ahead and he got the job done, which is a kudos to him personally and to Nigeria as well too. As a country. Yes.
Mm. And now we've been looking, they're uh, talking concerning badminton, fed uh, federation crisis is affecting the players. They will not be able to attend different competitions that they ought to attend. But right now, well, I know Lua Kweori Dimi Fit, he was able to manage his way through uh, to Uganda and he was able to win gold in that competition. Hopefully, all the crisis rocking our federations will put to an end and let these uh, players or athletes be able to enjoy their career. It's so, so disheartening when well, administrators. Well, uh, very, very painful. When will they end? Mm. That, that's, that's just the other question. When will the crisis end? Because none of them is ready to shift the ground. They're all, they're all trying to lay claim to whatever they're trying to lay claim with. Mm. And the, whatever regula uh, regulations are on board, none, it, it's all interest. All interest. Personal interest. Without putting the interest of the players or it's athletes just, at it, heart. It's just personal interest, that's what basically. Which also things can just be done right in Nigerian sport. All the faction are always affecting the athletes uh, from performing their duties. So uncalled for. Now we move away from badminton as we talk about football. Let's start from the second tier of Nigerian League, NNL. Nigerian National League fixtures uh, resort rather. Matches where play across different centers in Nigeria. From the Northern Conference, we have Zanfra United. Uh, they uh, drew one or draw against El Kalemi. Warriors, maybe the stars uh, they won away two new against Oya Sport, a mighty Jet against AFCC of Abuja at the jo New York Stadium. 3 1 it ended in favor of Mighty Jet, while FVWC champions from Abuja, the face City FC, uh, it was uh, a match that the Rugby World ended 2 1 there. Well, in the Northern Conference, A2 at uh, Damawa 2 nil against Jigawa Golden Stars, Rose Safety defeated uh, Nigerian Air Force by three goals to two. Imagine Rose Safety defeating <laughs> <laughs> football camp. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. uh, very, very exciting. Kogi United drew against Madum Fashi White. Kebi United drew also. One old draw against DMD. Now we go straight to the uh, Southern Conference. Van Dresser uh, over there in Lagos. It was one old draw in a derby match between them and Ikurudu City. JATT, they were defeated by Bende Insurance at the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium in Bini. Ibom Youth, that's in Aqua Ibom. They also peeped Adoration FC by a long goal down straight to Gateway, losing to Giants. Brillers, AKT United in the Southwestern Derby, one new against Abelkuta Stormers. Now, if we move straight to the South Co Southern Conference, B2, Abia Comets pipped FC1 Rocket with a, a long goal. Crown FC 2 1 against Wally Wolves. By Elsa United, it was 1 0 against Inewi United. While Rovers of Calabar, they pipped City Show of FC by a long goal as Ijebu United and Go Round FC played to go. Let's draw there. Well, I still don't understand how FC1 Rocket could not uh, uh, throw Rocket. Okay, so beats up the comments. Well, we just brought out the result of the NNL there, Nigeria National League. Too many matches during the weekend. Yeah, the NNL, like you say, is the most important uh, league in Nigeria mm. uh, because the the house, the, the, you have over, over uh, I mean, how many clubs? Over 30 clubs are there, but in this, in this league alone, that's a lot of clubs. And uh, we have seen the NPFL side, the Man United, Godi, uh, Jigal Godi Stars, who, know, who relegated to NLL. We have seen... Go around the FC and all of them. Better insurance, of course. You know, they are dominating, of course, they will dominate the smaller teams who have not experienced the top tier football in, in Nigeria. Uh, but I saw, I, saw, I saw the scholar between Adama United and uh, uh, Jigal Godi Stars. Adama United, of course, you know, they defeated uh, Godi Stars 2-0. But for it's expected because they they have made it, they've played against each other several times in the league in the Premier League before before they were dumped out into the NLL and everything. So, but the NLL is a very beautiful league anyway, and uh, we want to, that's where we get to see the real talent, mm. the the real players who will now grow from the NLL and move to the MPFL, yeah, and from there they can shoot to any, anywhere in the world. Uh, but one th well, there's a particular team that I, I want to see back in the MPFL, which is the better insurance. Mm. Well, it will uh, happen. Let them play their match. <laughs> yeah. and As then, you wish them and well. Then they did something that is very, very uh, unique yesterday, you know, over the weekend, whereby they gave out, most clubs wear one jersey or two jerseys for the whole season. But now, according to what information I got yesterday was that now all the players, now they, they be giving them a jersey, one, a match, a match, a jersey, and they should, and then they were giving out the jersey they wore, you know, to fans. Good that one. is a, a unique one that has not happened in Nigeria. In league. Nigeria, because the players they don't have jerseys. Mm. They can maybe they can wear one jersey for like seven matches, mm. or even a whole season. 
It's possible. Good one, Bear. We've been looking at the NLA. Our time is fast running now. Let's go straight to the MPFL. Well, match day 14 came on. Uh, matches were also played. Some will be coming up today, but let's look at the result. Ayimba, surprisingly, they played to a one-out draw against MFM. MFM has been the team that almost all the team have been beating in the MPFL, but they were able to, they held their own against Ayimba. 1-1, it ended. Sunshine Stars picked Quara United by a long goal. Aqua United, well, it was a five-goal thriller at the Goswa Pabio Stadium in 3-2. It was a derby between the two teams. They shared the same stadium. Uh, it was a good one there. Well, shooting stars against Wiki Torres. Goalers and you have Rivers United. Uh, well, they were able to dislodge Enugu Rangers over there at the Portacourt Stadium. Good one for uh, those uh, teams that won. Although for the team that didn't win, they have another time to make statement there. Let's look at the table as it stands right now. Despite matches coming up today, but the table is really making uh, some shape. Rivers are now back to the top. They've jumped over Plateau United after winning their game. Now they are top and Rangers are now standing tall. They are Raymond Stars, Aqua United, Quara 5 6 on the log. You have Ayimba because of that draw they had. Now they are standing seventh with 21 points from playing 14 matches. Wiki Torres, Gombe United, Shooting Stars well down. So MFM, despite that draw, now they have one point from it. They have 11 trailing Heartland by just a point who are standing. 19th with 12 points after playing 13 matches. Matches will be coming up today. We'll be looking at that in our subsequent edition. But so far, uh, at least, uh, that match between Aqua United and Dakada was uh, the attention match. A lot of people were like... It was like uh, Inter Milan versus uh, AC Milan. AC Milan. Uh, both clubs are owned by the state government, uh, Aqua Bomb, and they play, like you said, earlier, they play in the same stadium. So, of course, Aqua United was home. Hmm. Even though the Canada, share, yes. the Canada FC was played away, but you know, they share the same, uh, the same, the same stadium. So it's, it's not surprising that, of course, the bigger boss, because uh, the Canada FC is a smaller club to uh, Aqua United. Mm -hmm. And Aqua United, you know, despite the fact that their former coach, uh, Kenny De Boyas, has resigned, and they are the defending champions, they still have the bulk of the players, though, who can deliver the goods. And of course, they showed their younger player, because uh, the Canada FC is like a feeder team. Team to, to, to uh, Aqua, one way or the other. They're able to just get my, my permission to the NPFL, and they've stayed there for I think two, two or three seasons now. So they're like, uh, it was a big, it was a big uh, game for them and as well too. And uh, I, I was not surprised that Aqua United, of course, you can't, it, 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 it's just like playing uh, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal team A, playing against Arsenal team B. Of course, the team A should be able to be defeat uh, team, B. team B. What if it doesn't work out that way? But it should, <laughs> you know, on paper it should, it should. Okay. But one interesting match I saw that I, it was Aimba versus MFM. Um, Aimba were very, were very unlucky um, not, not to have won that game against mm. MFM. And, uh, you know, I pity the coach. Talking about... Finidi uh, George. Finidi George. You want George. Uh, the players, the woodwork, in fact, the god of soccer was not, was asleep for Aimba. <laughs> because they had three of them, they should have scored about four goals, but all the, the goals... The woodwork was the, just... The woodwork, in fact, the, in fact the, the, the woodwork was just there to stop them from scoring more goals. And they, and they scored very early. In, in, at least, I think in seven minutes, then uh, uh, five minutes later, MFM scored, and that's how the game ended. But it was a beautiful game as well, too. And, and I hope to see Imba, you know, uh, come up back to that level they are. And uh, if you need to judge, I think he's doing a good job as well, too. But it, it, it will take time for him to get to the top. Well, uh, even though you've been talking MPFL, we used that to actually swap in to EPL. The biggest match over the weekend was Manchester City Tottenham World Sport. Uh, no one expected, no, it's not as if people underrated Tottenham, but with the way Manchester have been playing, people expected maybe that at least they were going to win. But it was a turn of the table as uh, Tottenham, they were able to do the unimaginable. Double. Hmm. In double, at least they have the, uh, I thought I thought them have defeated the Man City twice this season now, hmm. and uh, Conte, of course, the Italian wizard, you know, he has the team has not really played well in the last uh, few games. You know, they've lost some games, but everything. But you know, Conte, Conte is just a man who has uh, that uh, winning, uh, winning mentality. And Harry Kane, a man that Man City were trying to push, uh, were trying to, you know, he was still putting it on their faces that he, yes, I'm here. See, come and get and me. It, and they scored two goals. In fact, the the the, the, the third goal was killed the old, but that was even more the damn minutes of the match and everything. So, uh, uh, Man City, and that game, of course, has thrown the league open again, you know, between uh, Man City and Liverpool. I think six-point difference now, mm. and uh, it is very, very open between both 
Man City and Liverpool. Well, that will take us to look at the result that happened over the weekend in the English Premier League as we move quickly to look at the result. Well, it was a battle in the, over there in London, Newcastle. They held their own 1 0 draw against West Ham United, Arsenal, Brentford 2 1. Axton Villa, surprisingly, Emmanuel Dennis, they were able to do it against them at the Villa Park. They won 1 0. They are good one for Watford. Brighton against Burnley 3 0. Good one for Burnley. Chelsea, Hakim Ziyech, who won't stop scoring right now. They did it against Crystal Palace, one new Liverpool, Mane, Salah, the, the African brothers are really making statements. 3-1 against Norway City, Southampton against Everton. What is happening to Frank Lampard team? 2-0, they actually lost that game. Well, Tottenham Hotspur, the match that we actually used to open the EPL talk, 3-2, it ended in favor of uh, Conte's team against Guardiola, who right now has become a thorn in the flesh. Leeds United, 4-2 against uh, uh, Manchester United. Fred, yes, he was a man. The Brazilian was happy as he were able to do it. Ilanga also, what was his current sheet there? Leicester City, despite Nigerians uh, doing well there, where they lost that game against uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers at the Millennium Stadium, 2-1. Leicester City, well, our own brother, Lukman, who just recently switched allegiance to Nigeria, scored that goal. And quickly, let's look at the way the table is standing over there in the English Premier League. Well, Manchester City uh, topping with just uh, six points now. Liverpool are closing the gap. Uh, Chelsea, Manchester United, West Ham, Arsenal, Wolverhampton Wanderers with us uh, are winning. While Spurs, despite winning that match, they are standing far away, eight on the low. But for Liverpool, Manchester City, I think uh, is open right now. Yeah, the, uh, the league is very open. It's very open, uh, and uh, it's anybody. I, I listened to one of the uh, Gadula's uh, press conference. He said Liverpool is a pain in the ass mm. because he knows that if he loses any ground, Liverpool will surely take over the. You know, so I'm sure he will put his boy under intense pressure. That guys, there's one club behind us here. Mm. Please do let it catch us because if if they lose the next game and Liverpool wins the next game. Mm. The gap is it's close. really close into three points. It's it will be to three points. And anybody can win the league from that from that point. And now it's still very open, considering yeah, very what open. happened. And uh, for 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 Leicester, uh, that game uh, against Wolverhampton Wanderers, you know, in the D, uh, Ihe uh, I'm happy for Lukman. At least mm -hmm. that was him to action. Six goals right now. Uh, you're looking at his performance being loaned from Leipzig to uh, Leicester. Uh, can we say that uh, the addition of this young man to Nigerian Super Eagles right now will speak volume because of this performance? Yes, yes. He's a bright star. He's a very good player. And uh, he, he will bring in so much uh, flair and speed uh, uh, as well uh, into the Super Eagles. He's going to bring in a new dimension into the Super Eagles as well too. Mm -hmm. So he's a very good prospect and um, we look forward to seeing him making his debut for the uh, Super Eagles. So he can bring his A game from the uh, Leicester City uh, down to the Super Eagles. And luckily for him, he has two other brothers in the team, talking about a and uh, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. who will always tell him the rule, who, who, who will guide him well into, in, you know, adapting to the Super Eagles. Because as a fresher, he might feel, he might, he might not feel worse, some, he might not feel too cool, but of course, they'll make him feel at home when he comes in. Luckily, he has two brothers already in that same team. And, uh, I believe it's a very good thing for him to have uh, joined up with the Nigerian side. And someone was saying, uh, okay, just on a lighter note now, maybe the soap that uh, he had not sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. the soap is... That, that, that's fast finished. <laughs> that's super finished. They should cut out that soap because for he, he, he not just not scoring goals again. Mm -hmm. Like, with a reckless abandon, like, was scoring, you know, when the soap was still, you know, the soap was still plenty. Mm -hmm. Now the soap has dried up. The goals has dried up. As maybe well, you should take him to where he got that soap from. <laughs> well, that's on a lighter note. We've been talking concerning Leicester City, Nigerian brothers. They are the effect of being together. Lukman at Demola, not forgetting Wilfred Indy, and also here at Chor Kelechi, the three brothers who play the same team there, and now they will be coming to play in the Super Eagles of Nigeria. That will be it on 360 Sport. Uh, GD Olushala has been uh, talking with me. Good to have you on the show. Anytime, any day. Good one there. Well, as we always say, that sport is fitness and business. Do not forget to join us on our social media platform. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching. Well.